What is happening, everyone? Welcome back to G-Ball Vision. Tonight, I wanted to take a closer look at some of the best crossbar locking knives in the entire knife industry, where Benchmade was the originator, the king. They used to run the table on the crossbar lock, and then... You know, the patent ran out on the crossbar lock for Benchmade and other companies started to kind of get a hold of it and started using it like Hogue and SOG and TRM and a plethora of other companies, right? And then Kaiser got a hold of it. They came up with the clutch lock, which is, in my opinion, the best version of the crossbar lock that you can get now there is a company that is coming right up behind their heels we'll get to that here in a minute but here we have the kaiser escort and the kaiser drop bear here kind of like big brother little brother 20 cv for the escort stonewashed tumbled finish you have black aluminum scales and then i threw a trm deep carry titanium clip there the drop bear is sporting 154 cm with a satin finish. You have this nice low drop point, spear point blade, black aluminum scales, and then we have a deep carry steel rollover clip. Now, these are both sporting the clutch lock. And in both cases, they're using the strongest springs that I could get, and they are on the strongest setting. The Kaiser Escort, guys, is in my opinion the king of crossbar locks in this exact configuration right here. I know they make some other ones. I have not tried them, but this is, without a shadow of a doubt, the best crossbar lock knife that I have ever handled. Not only is the lock very well done and it is very strong, but it is fun as hell to manipulate this knife open and closed. It really feels like you have a true seven or eight on the scale out of you know one to 10 on the detent system. That's what this feels like, a seven or eight, which is insane. And then on disengagement, this bad boy just wants to go home. Uh, so strong, it feels so good to deploy this knife. And you can't say the same about a lot of other crossbar locking knives. Now the drop bear here, same thing, strongest springs I could get on the strongest setting, and it feels close to the Escort, but I think that bigger, heavier blade really helps aid in this being just a touch better. Now, like I said, the drop bear is right behind the Escort, and you know it's kind of like a one-two punch with both of these. I'm hoping other companies, you know, start getting really innovative with the crossbar lock. And we're about to jump into a company who is doing just that. Now say hello to my little friend here. We have the Kubi Bluff. Now this is a newer knife to me, a newer knife to the channel. Kubi did send this guy in, and I wasn't aware of the fact of a couple of things. Now, I touch on that in the overview of this knife, but this is actually the same designer who is the owner and designer of Bridgeport Knives. He did the 395 version 1 and 2, a spectacular knife design, a spectacular designer. I did not know that he was the designer or, you know, he was the designer and Kubi and him worked together to put the bluff out. And I also didn't know that Kubi is also using an adjustable system within their crossbar lock. Now, this knife is in the process of being broken in. It has extremely tight tolerances, not to the point where it's not uh, fun to flick open or reverse flick. It's just on that close. But that's a good thing because the knife needs some breaking in opposed to things being loose and having that drop shut action and all that sort of thing. This knife needs broken in because the tolerances are so tight and that's a good thing. It's still nice and smooth and it, it feels good. It's just on that close. It needs a little bit more breaking in. I've only had the knife 
for uh, a, a couple days here, and I haven't gotten a lot of time with it. But one thing I can say is, not only is this design fantastic, 14C, 28N, you have a nice low drop point blade, you have a fuller going into a cutout, and it just works, guys. It, it really reminds me of the drop bear in a sense, but in my opinion, I think the bluff is a little bit better, just a little bit better. Um, you know, I put this right up there behind the Escort, getting in touch with the Escort. And, and, and I haven't messed with this. This is right out of the box. So I don't know where the adjustment is on this knife at this current time. I don't know if it's on the strongest, the middle, the lowest. It is a three-tier system, just like the Drop Bear and the Escort. And this is Kubi's first crossbar locking knife. And I think they nailed it. G10, you have this nice micro milled pattern all throughout. Reversible clip, of course. They redesigned their pocket clip. It's even more minimal and more clean. Just a great knife, guys. And I expect Kubi to continue coming for the Kaiser crossbar lock. Kubi does a great job. And I think they're going to continue that going into 2024. Let's go ahead and get to another company who nails the crossbar lock. So next up, we have the SOG XR lock, the crossbar lock, guys. This is, you know, this was their interpretation of being innovative. And I think they did a great job. They, instead of using the original Benchmade system, where it's just kind of a tooled uh, screw, basically, SOG decided to throw these tabs on here. And now I can say that this is the most comfortable crossbar lock in the game. Because of these tabs and the way this is done, this is the most comfortable, easiest crossbar lock to disengage. And they also nail the crossbar lock the way they designed it in there. The springs that they're using, it's just solid, guys. Uh, very strong, not quite up to, you know, the adjustability of the Kaisers and the Kubi, but it's close. It's it's right there. Uh, and that's without adjustability. So imagine having these tabs with the adjustability of a Kaiser or a Kubi. I mean, this could be a total game changer with these tabs and that adjustability. Now, right here, we have the Terminus XR in D2 with a stonewash blade. It's been cryo-treated. You have dull thumb studs and a flipper tab, which is a nice touch, in my opinion. You know, some people probably don't like the flipper. Some do. I like the flipper. I like multi-deploying options. Uh, G10 handles here. SOG's minimal deep carry clip. And then we have the Vision. The Vision XR in XHP, cryo-treated. You have this Tanto blade with a PVD coating. You have dual thumb studs and a flipper tab. Works great for the push button and the light switch. Comfortable, easy to open and close this thing. And this is a knife that I have flicked, opened, and closed a lot. Very comfortable in hand. Yes, this is more of the tactical side of knives and the crossbar lock, but that's okay. Uh, knives are tools, and tools are designated for a variety of jobs. Some might be tactical self-defense type knives. Some might be work users. Some might be just day-to-day -day carries. Some might be gentleman style users, once in a while type deals. Uh, so you have, you know, a variety of ways and whys as to, you know, how you're going to use the knife. And that is okay in my book. And <clears throat> I think this also makes a good, you know, not only a good self-defense tactical knife, but it's proven itself to me to be a good EDC knife and a good work knife. It's easy 
to get in and out of the pocket because of this lower mounted clip. You can get a whole lot of knife and that is designed that way on purpose to get it out of your pocket quick. But it's easy to get out, easy to get back in. It's comfortable and I just love the way SOG has kind of started to reinvent themselves and you know they haven't done a whole lot since they put out a couple of these knives at least not much that i have seen so i'm i'm wondering if they're going to have maybe a big year in 2024 i guess time will tell but let's go ahead and get to another company that nails the crossbar lock next up we got the trm shadow with the river lock and this is their first attempt at the crossbar lock. We have 20 CV steel, uh, a beautiful tall sheep's foot-esque style blade here, kind of a very, very low drop point. It's kind of a modified version of both, but it works so, so well. You have this nice stone wash finish here on this guy. Dull thumb studs for the deployment. And then you have this G10 that is just excellent. Very well finished. Titanium filler tab. Titanium pocket clip. Uh, just a great knife all the way around. And this is another knife just like that Kubi that we saw earlier that has taken its, you know, it's needed its time to get broken in. But as it has broken in, and it's still breaking in, uh, this is still breaking in, but as it has broken in, it's just gotten buttery, buttery smooth. It's maintained its solid lockup. Uh, just a great interpretation of that crossbar lock. The river lock is definitely in my favorites of all time at this point. They absolutely nailed it over there at TRM. TRM nails everything they do, in my opinion. Uh, and I hope they continue using that lock in other designs because they just absolutely crushed it with this thing. So comfortable, so user-friendly, you know, and, and crossbar locks are nice. Uh, especially for, you know, maybe newer knife users. It keeps your fingers out of the path of that blade, unlike a liner lock, frame lock, bolster lock, you know, so it's a little bit safer. It's just a, a, a fun lock to use. It's very capable. You know, it's not the strongest lock in the world, but it is definitely a stronger lock than, you know, average, I would say. TRM absolutely crushed it. Let's go ahead and get to another one. The next company pretty much followed up right behind Benchmade with the crossbar lock. Hogue did the Able Lock, their interpretation of the crossbar lock. And as you can see, they, they did a little something different. They kind of did a stepped design, kind of like... Uh, you would see on normal thumb studs, you can see there the step design on the thumb studs, but it just works. It's comfortable, it's easy to grab a hold of. Not quite as easy as, say, SOGS, but uh, you know, just underneath them, just like the Kaiser, the Kubi, the Shadow. Uh, Hogue does a great job all the way around from, you know, being USA made. Be, being affordable, using good materials all the way around. Uh, they just do a fantastic job over there, and their crossbar locks show that. This knife is an absolute beast. I did 25 minutes of cutting with this MagnaCut blade, and it just kept cutting and cutting and cutting, and it's still hungry for more. But that lock held up wonderfully. It's nice and strong. Uh, I, I love Hogue's interpretation of the crossbar lock. Definitely one of my favorite crossbar locking knives in the game. Now you might be asking yourself, is there a more affordable crossbar locking knife that I could recommend? And yes, there definitely is. Now, the SOG uh, Terminus XR, that comes in right around 50 bucks. Uh, and I think that's a decent price. It is D2. But in this case, we have the CMB Predator version 1 
and we have Predator version 2 here using that crossbar lock. Now, this is coming in D2, this is coming in 14C, you have G10, you have Micarta, they are both excellent, coming in right around 50 to 60 bucks. This is one of my favorite crossbar locking knives in the affordable range. It is just executed uh, to perfection. Like I said, 14C, 60 bucks, a beautiful drop point blade with a swedge going to the tip. You have a nice coating on here for some added corrosion protection. Dual thumb studs for the deployment. And the cool thing is they use this little ball with a step design. So it's a, a little bit different than everyone else's. And I can say that it works very good. It protrudes just enough there that you can get a nice grip on it. It's comfortable to disengage. I would say possibly the second most comfortable behind SOG as far as just, you know, the tabs themselves and being comfortable. I think CMB just absolutely crushed it with these models. My D2 version here has not gotten as much play as my 14C version, but they are basic, you know, they're identical knives. The, the version 2 is a touch more refined and using 14C in my Carta, definitely, you know, the winner out of the two. But they're both excellent knives, very well executed. And I think this would be, you know, kind of my budget pick when it comes to the crossbar locking knife. Let's check out a couple more. I just wanted to throw a quick cameo in here for this knife. I believe Kaiser is the OEM behind these crossbar locks, but Vostid's crossbar locks on the raccoons are top notch as well, coming in, you know, right around, I believe, $60 or so. 14C, sheep's foot or drop point blades, micarta, you know, they have a bunch of different flavors. Not quite up to uh, the CMB Predator V2, but it's close. It's it's right there. I'm talking about just as far as the knife is concerned itself. I would pick probably the CMB over the Vostid, but uh, this is right there with it and would be a good option if you're looking for a sheep's foot that is in a crossbar locking knife. But I got one more to get to as well. And what I meant by one more is at least one more after this. But here we have the Asher Knives, and this is the Nomad 3.0. Now, this was my, I think, my second experience with a company other than Benchmade that did the crossbar lock. And this is done fantastic. These were around 100 bucks. No, you cannot get them anymore, at least not right now. He is coming out with a sheep's foot version. This one has a stonewashed M390 blade. You have a fuller that is usable and dull thumb studs that are very comfortable to open this guy up with. And then you have a very similar uh, tab as the CMB. They kind of give you a little ball on the top with some stepping underneath, making it nice and comfortable and easy to get to. This is an excellent knife, guys. G10, lefty friendly with a filler tab, nice pocket clip, around 100 bucks. I mean, for M390 uh, and this kind of build, that's a uh, damn good deal in my book. Now, I want to get to one other one at least here. And you might be saying, well, can I get in even cheaper than 50, 60 bucks? And the answer is yes, you can. Now, we have an F and Grow here, the EF966, I believe. And then we have this JSWS. It's just called the EDC knife, basically. JSWS EDC knife. These can often be had for like 25, 30 bucks. 440C for the steel with a satin finish, my car to handles, you have the crossbar lock, a deep carry clip, and this F and Grow here, which is a, a fairly newer knife to me, 
uh, and my first experience with a crossbar lock with FN Grow. This is D2 uh, Stonewash Blade. These come in uh, right around 30 bucks, I think, or maybe even a little bit cheaper. I think 25. My Carta Stonewash D2 Blade Drop Point Swedge going to the tip. Dull thumb studs for the deployment. Uh, you know, a lower mounted clip. I I would prefer a little bit of a deeper clip, but you know, it's easy to get in and out of the pocket and for 25 bucks hard to bitch about and same with this uh jsws here but f and grow has tuned this version of this knife this model very well guys uh it's it's very well done uh it really feels kind of similar to what the kubi and the drop bear feel like as far as spring strength and that sort of thing now it is easy to get to these tabs they're actually pretty comfortable as well you can see the little stepping design that they do here and for 25 bucks you know out the door with d2 micarta crossbar lock it's hard to sneeze at this knife right here uh it's broken in very very well just after you know maybe a week of messing with it it has broken in extremely well the jsws is taking quite a bit of time to break in and it, it's strong it's held up so is the f and grow strong lockup solid lockup clip point blade this is a little bit bigger of a knife but to get in the door you know with 440 around like 25 bucks or so with my carta uh, this is a nice little user. I've beat the piss out of it, and uh, it seems to have held up, you know, very well. Uh, you know, the 440 is decent, especially at that price range. The thumb studs have kind of a unique take on them. They're that flat design with the uh, speckled jimps there, and, you know, they work pretty good. Easy to get to these tabs. These are just two options that, you know, I kind of hold in higher regard when it comes to the very budget end of crossbar locks now don't get me wrong sativian makes some decent crossbar locking knives ganzo does as well so there are options out there that are a lot cheaper than some of the previous models you'll have to let me know down in the comments what some of your favorite crossbar locking knives are did we touch on most of them did i miss one let me know down in the comments. These are just some of my favorites, and I think most of the ones that I showed previously are the best ones. Uh, I may have missed one. You'll have to let me know down in the comments. I left Benchmade out of this uh, just for the particular reason that they are the ones who created it, so I kind of left them off the table here, so to speak, but uh, they do have models where they killed the crossbar lock and then they have some that are eh but uh you know there's a lot of good crossbar locking knives out there these days and all kinds of different price points from 30 bucks up to three four hundred bucks uh so you know you can kind of pick your poison with it uh there's definitely some very good ones out there don't forget to hit the thumbs up button guys that really helps the videos get out there and get to more eyes so does leaving a comment answering other comments i really appreciate it when you guys do that if you're new to the channel or you've been here before and you're not subscribed you might as well hit that subscribe button down below the video i'm going to throw up three new videos here here and here Go check one of them out, and I will catch you on the next one.